Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Kent and I'm an artist based out of San Francisco. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that is really important and really close to home to me. And it's about perfectionism and specifically how perfectionism can kill your creativity. And this topic is really important to me because I know what it's like firsthand for perfectionism to kill your creativity. I've experienced it myself. And it took me a really long time to recover from it and to find my creativity again, to find my artistic voice and to start actually loving creating once more. And I wanna share my story here and my insights and what I've learned so that if you're experiencing the same thing, if you're currently struggling with perfectionism in your own practice, then you can take these insights and help transform your practice into something that's more joyful, where you're free to create your life's work. So first, let me tell you about my own battle with perfectionism. I've been drawing ever since I was little. Um, as long as I can remember, I was picking up a pencil and drawing things, making creatures, mostly making things out of my imagination. And I really loved being able to think about something and then put it onto paper and kind of bring it to life. But I always felt like what I was drawing wasn't the same as what was in my mind. And so I tried to improve my skill more and more and more so that I could make the images in my mind seem to appear on paper. And so I always had this strong focus on building skill and craft in my art practice. And this became really, really strong when I was a teenager. I got into photorealistic drawings and paintings and I would labor for hours and hours and hours on a piece trying to make it perfect, trying to make it look just like the photo. I would even work so hard to hide every brush stroke so that you wouldn't even be able to see, you wouldn't even have a sign of the hand that created the piece. And throughout this work, I was striving for perfection. I wanted to make an art piece that looked exactly like the photo, that um, was so skilled and so well rendered that you wouldn't be able to distinguish it between the photo of the subject. And with hours and hours of dedicated practice over many days and even years, I got better and better at doing this, at making this photorealistic work. So you would think that as I was getting closer to accomplishing my goal, I would be feeling happier and I would be feeling more fulfilled in my art practice, or at least that's what I thought. But in truth, the effect was actually the opposite. As my skills got better, as I got uh, more and more capable at rendering things in this photorealistic style, I actually started enjoying art less and less. I noticed that while I was working on the painting, I wasn't feeling the joy of creating, but instead I was feeling this fear that I would mess it up, that one simple brushstroke could ruin hours and hours of work. And so I was working with this like very tense, very stressed out feeling on these pieces because I wanted them to be perfect. I also noticed I was really hesitant to even start a new piece because if I was gonna be devoting hours and hours and hours to working on this very difficult, very uh, detailed painting, then I needed to make sure that the idea was really good, that the idea was worth that huge time investment. And I would have to convince myself that, that it was. So this often meant that I just threw out a lot of ideas thinking, you know, they're not worth the effort. So these two effects sort of combined and over time I, enjoyed the process much less, so I painted less, and also I felt a bigger and bigger pressure to have a great idea that was worthy of painting, and it seemed like none of the ideas I had ever measured up. And it eventually got so bad that I basically just stopped painting. I had a lot of other stuff going on in my life, I was figuring out college and career and things like that, and painting was just another, it was a burden. It wasn't a joy. It wasn't something that I looked forward to. So it was easier for me to just put it aside. I still painted occasionally. I did about one painting a year, occasionally did some sketching, but for the most part, my art practice was dead. And I think it was really hard because for a long time, I didn't realize that perfectionism was actually causing my problems. I thought I just had high standards. I thought perfectionism was actually a good thing. But then when I looked at my art practice and when I looked at other elements of my life, because perfectionism wasn't just affecting my art, I realized that perfectionism was costing me a lot and giving me very little. Because the issue with perfectionism is not having high standards, it's trying to achieve perfect, which is impossible. So there's a difference between high standards and impossibly high standards. If you have high standards, 
but you can meet them, then you can get a sense of achievement, you can get a sense of accomplishment. If you have impossibly high standards, then there's no way you're ever going to meet them. So it kind of breeds this feeling of like helplessness, because why would you even try? If it's impossible to make the perfect painting, then why would you pick up a brush in the first place? So how did I break out of the perfectionism trap? I think two things happened at the same time that ended up working really well to help me see the pitfalls of perfectionism and move past them. The first was that I did a CBT for perfectionism workbook. And this is using cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. And it's just a uh, workbook that helps you go through um, all of your motivations for perfectionist tendencies, the way that perfectionism manifests in your life, and it kind of helps you like walk through your perfectionist thinking so that you can see how it's problematic and how you can fix it. This is a super helpful workbook. It's self-guided. It's really easy to follow and I'll link it below in case you're interested. I don't get any sponsorship from it. I just think it's great. <laughs> The other big thing that really helped me rediscover my joy for painting was doing a daily painting workshop. So I did a still life painting workshop with Sarah Sedgwick, and who's an amazing teacher. If you have not seen her classes, they're fantastic. Um, highly recommend her. But um, I did her workshop and in the workshop, she talks about daily painting and she presents, she teaches the alla prima method for painting, which is what I do now. And she goes through still life painting in a lot of quick exercises using small canvases that you can complete in just a few hours rather than the paintings that I was used to working on that took me maybe 40 hours or 80 hours or even more. And this concept of daily painting was revolutionary to me. I just, I had no idea that a painting could be so quick, so simple, and done with just this sense of joy and freedom rather than the weight of all of my perfectionist expectations. And I think the reason for this is because daily painting really takes the pressure off of painting and it kind of treats painting more as just a practice like how you would exercise or the other things that you do in your regular daily routine. Painting was no longer this big important thing where I was trying to create a masterpiece but instead it was just a daily way to connect, connect with my creativity. And I think there are several factors of daily painting that help reduce my perfectionist tendencies. The first is that usually daily paintings are done on a time limit. If you have your daily painting practice, um, like for me, it was up to maybe two hours. I couldn't spend longer than that on a painting. In many days, I would just paint for one hour. And I knew that in one hour, there's no way I would be able to create a masterpiece. So I was already able to throw my perfectionist tendencies out the window and say, you know what, I'm just going to paint whatever I can in this hour, and then I'm going to let it go. I think time limits are really, really helpful in getting you to reduce your expectations and focus more on the process of painting itself rather than the outcome. And the cool thing about setting a time limit was that I thought that there was no way that I'd be able to create a beautiful painting in such a short amount of time. I thought I needed that increased time to get all of the details in to make beautiful work. But what I found was that once I had removed this need for photorealistic detail and I just allowed myself to paint and try to focus on the essence of the subject instead in this short amount of time, um, it really forced a level of clarity in my work. I really had to pick what is really important in, in this painting, in this image. And it also caused me to, um, to use brushwork that I felt was more expressive, more emotional. And in the end, I think the paintings that I created were remarkably beautiful. I realized painting didn't need to be tedious. It could be expressive and poetic and emotional in a way that my photorealistic work wasn't. The second thing that helped with daily painting was the sheer quantity of paintings that I was making. When I was making a painting every single day, I worked through so many different ideas and I tried so many different things out and it took the pressure off of each individual painting because when I was doing only one painting a year, I really hoped that that was a good painting or else, you know, that's my painting for the year. But if I'm doing a painting every single day, then if the painting is bad one day, that's fine. Maybe it'll be better the next day. Um, I realized that the, the bad paintings were a lot easier to accept when I was producing just such a large quantity of work. 
I also realized when I was producing a larger quantity of paintings doing this daily painting practice, I just felt so much freer to experiment and to try new ideas. And sometimes the ideas, sometimes they didn't work out, but sometimes I would try something that I wasn't so sure about and be really pleasantly surprised with the outcome. The other thing I learned from daily painters was to paint in really small sizes. So I stuck with panels that were like six inches by six inches or smaller. And that was really helpful for me because it made it, when you're working on a, a panel of that size, it's really hard to get really into the fine details. And so it shifted my tendency away from focusing on details and more focusing on just the overall feeling of the image, which in the end was a lot more satisfying for me as a painter. I realized that my perfectionism was just fear masquerading as having high standards. When I let go of my perfectionism, I was actually able to create more work and better work and grow more quickly as an artist. And I was happy doing it. Letting go of perfection allowed me to fall back in love with the creative process and enjoy the childlike curiosity and exploration that comes with it. So if you think that letting go of perfection is going to make you lose your edge, I'm here to tell you that's not the case. And it might actually be the opposite. So that's my story and I hope I hope that it has helped you to understand why perfectionism can be really bad for your artwork and how uh, moving out of the perfectionist mindset and tendencies can make your art practice so much better. And if you're stuck in perfectionism like I was, and like honestly, sometimes I still am today, um, here are some things that can help you get out of it. First, I highly recommend cognitive behavioral therapy for perfectionism. And secondly, there are a few exercises you can do to help move away from perfectionism and improve your art practice. You can do daily paintings where you're creating a large quantity of work to take the pressure off of each individual painting. You can also set time limits on your painting. Set really strict time limits where you think there's no way I could make a good painting in this time limit. Similarly, you can paint on smaller canvases or paint with larger brushes. These are all the techniques that I use to keep perfectionism at bay. I hope they work for you too. What about you? Is perfectionism a problem in your work? Have you figured out techniques to address it? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. And I really hope that by sharing my story and my experience, um, you can help avoid some of the pitfalls that I've run into and have a more joyful painting process. And a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and my work. If you like my art, if you like my videos, and you want to help me make more, consider joining my Patreon at the link below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.